In the last part of the identity leadership model, we continue to think about the ways that social identity theorists theory helps us understand leadership effectiveness. This part of the model emphasizes the ways that leader, leaders influence followers' behavior by emphasizing the group identity. In some ways, this part of the model is a little tricky to separate from identity entrepreneurship. One way to think about it, though, is that the authors of the model present what a leader does, they shape identity, and then how they do it, and that's this chapter. As the authors of the book mention, leaders need skills, not just ideas. In the article I've been referring to, the authors emphasize the idea of the leader being an impresario of identity, or the one who organizes and produces activities where the group's identity is enacted. In other words, the idea is that the leader doesn't just talk about what the group means, they deliberately create productions that demonstrate the group's values and norms. Those productions can range and might include inspirational posters or dinners that celebrate accomplishment. Regardless of the scale of production, though, the followers are part of it, rather than being passive audience members. As I mentioned, these activities are part of the how of being an entrepreneur of identity. The authors also address the question of why we think about productions of identity when they mention the need for enduring impact. The physical manifestations might be as large and as literal as a building, but could also be an event or another object. As I mentioned, the article emphasizes the productions that reflect identity. In the book, they also mention two other topics, being artists and being engineers. The authors use the label artists of identity in discussing how a leader uses language to shape and convey social identity. The quote from page 176 is a good summary of the main point. The authors suggest that the, the ability to successfully influence group identity is based on their vocabulary, rhetoric, and use of poetry. After reading this section a few times, thinking about the author's point about knowing the culture of the group helped me understand this idea a little bit more. Culture provides context, and a skilled leader can apply that to understand what different word choices will mean to a group. For example, a leader might describe a group by saying, we're simple people. If the culture of the group is to be down to earth, that might be taken as meaning, we don't want more than's necessary. If the culture of the group, though, is based on seeking recognition for members' skills and abilities, that phrase might not help the group move forward. Reddick and poetry are also about how the leader uses vocabulary, and the effectiveness will depend on cultural context. The authors also discuss that it's not just words, nonverbal communication matters as well, points that you'll want to note in this section of the text. The discussion of being engineers of identity in this new psychology of leadership complements what we learned about leading social change in the last module. Indeed, the authors use this label to describe activities that shape society to create the future. The emphasis on influ influencing society adds to the importance of understanding the related social forces, including sources of resistance. Understanding those forces helps the leader understand how to reduce opposition and helps them expect struggles. In some cases, leaders choose questionable strategies for working with those forces, including witch hunts. As the authors discuss, targeting those who differ from the group can mobilize the group. That mobilization can be at the cost, though, of accurately understanding the outgroup. Reading the section made me think of the psychological concept of self-fulfilling prophecies, which basically means that something comes be true because we already behave as if it is true. In this part of the book, and this part of the identity leadership model, the authors talk about how to make a group's identity visible, unique, and appealing. They emphasize creating situations and things that allow group members to actively experience being part of that identity, a process they call impresarioship. Being an artist of language also contributes to the process when the leader can effectively incorporate cultural knowledge. The identity may also become more unique and appealing as the leader engineers the efforts to influence society as a whole. 
This part of the model might seem a little bit more removed from leadership effectiveness of the other, than the others. We can help connect it if we come back to the idea that social identity theory says the group influences members, or the followers, self-concepts, when an individual identifies with the group. Depersonalization is when an individual defines their self more in terms of the group identity than their individual identity. This part of the model is about making the group identity visible and real and appealing, and that will make it more likely the individuals will see it as something they want to identify with, something they will depersonalize for.